It seems that a day doesn't go by and we hear about how the current bull market is now 10 years old and the market is near a top, or there is some TV pundit that proclaims that we need to prepare for the market crash coming soon. Just recently, Senator Elizabeth Warren predicted an imminent economic crisis. So, some good questions are, how will we know when the stock market top has finally arrived? And when will the next correction begin? So, let's take a look. Based on history, we can say that in very general terms, market rallies typically last from about three to five years, while a correction could typically run for about nine months to a year. But those are typical rallies and corrections. However, as we know, recent history is quite different. The March 2000 to October 2002 NASDAQ crash lasted for over two years. Following the crash, the market rallied for about five years which then set up the market for another stunning decline. The January 2008 to March 2009 bear market lasted for over a year, and now we find ourselves over 10 years from that March 2009 bottom looking for the next market top. Many market pros stress that a bull market doesn't die of old age. Instead, it dies of excess, and the market falls in anticipation of a major economic decline. As an individual investor, you simply can't read every quarterly report or every economic statistic. It is a sheer impossibility to predict the future of the manufacturing industry, how deep a trade war between the U.S. and China or another country could be, or what the next company or country will default on its debt. So. Is there another way to help recognize if the market appears ready for a big fall? The answer is yes, absolutely. Simply watch the market itself. The market represents the sum total of buying and selling decisions made by investors, traders, money managers, and institutions. No one, and I mean no one, is smarter than the market. So why not track the market? A simple and efficient way is to track the market on a daily basis and pay attention to instances of unusually strong professional selling. When the so-called smart money rushes for the exit, we can all see it. What you want to look for are distribution days. Based on Investors Business Daily or IBD, a distribution day is defined as the loss of at least 0.2% by a major index such as the NASDAQ Composite or the S&P 500, with volume exceeding the total volume of the prior session. The reason to track the market is simple. Distribution days are almost always a sign that big money is exiting the market. Markets don't move much one way or the other without the big money. So why not watch what they're doing? So how many distribution days do you watch for before the market rolls over? In the current environment, the count could take from about 6 to 10 distribution days before the market heads south for good. Understand that the market may fall in early trading on higher volume only to recover and end up higher on the day. This would not qualify as a distribution day. In fact, the market may continue to track higher even with several distribution days. To watch the market, use a 25-day trading count. If within the 25-day count, there are from about 6 to 10 distribution days, the probability of a market top may have been set. However, as discussed by IBD, there are three ways a distribution day can fall off the count. One possibility is that after 25 market sessions, a distribution day expires. As such, the count would fall by one. According to IBD, a second way a distribution day can fall off the count is for the index to rise 5% on an intraday basis from its close on the day the higher volume loss appears. The third way is far more painful. A broad market correction makes the distribution day count a moot point. Often, 
a high distribution day count will precede that correction. Once the market falls into a correction, the next big question is, when will it once again begin an uptrend? So let's go back to 2007 and look at the last major correction. Looking at this chart of the S&P 500 from IVD, you can see how distribution days mounted just before the collapse. There you can see number one, that's December 11th, 2007, where there was a negative 2.5% drop. Number two is December 17th, where there was a negative 1.5% drop. Number three is December 27th, a negative 1.4% drop. Number four is December 31st, a 0.7% drop. And number five is January 2nd, 2008, where there was a 1.4% drop. Now all of these were large declines, and each time volume rose versus the prior trading session. On January 4th, 2008, you saw number six, which was a 2.5% sell-off, and the sixth distribution day in 25 market sessions. That's the day that many declared the market correction began. By March 6, 2009, the S&P 500 recorded a low of 666.79 or a 54.5% slide from the 2007 peak. So now let's go to our charts and see how we're doing currently. So now looking at our charts, using the Spider's six-month daily chart, that vertical line there in mid-June essentially marks the 25-day period or trading day period that uh, IBD suggests. And by my interpretation of the rules, I count five distribution days during that 25-day count period. Again, the distribution days are down days with higher volume than the previous day. So again, maybe you get a different count than I, but I'm counting five days so far. So it doesn't look like we're heading for a correction, at least yet. And this is an easy enough formula to follow. Just simply, every day, take a look at your calendar and mark the down days with higher volume. When it totals, say, six to 10, that's a good point in time to start getting concerned that maybe we've seen the top. So keep watching out, and I will too. And for today, that's Chewdog Charts. Thank you.